Today I'm going to show you five hidden ways to work with Windows 10 faster. Now, before you click away because you think you know everything there is to know about Windows, I'm sure that at least one of today's hidden features will be something that you don't know and that you're not currently using. And it could help you to work faster and to just generally have an easier life. I'm going to show you how to log in and unlock Windows faster. I'm going to show you how you can connect to and use your phone right from within Windows 10, how to organize your open app windows so that you can arrange them more efficiently, how to have Windows automatically reopen all of your apps when you restart or start up your device. And I'll show you how to organize your open apps so that you can better focus on different clients, tasks and projects. If you find any of the content in today's video useful, or maybe you start using one of the hidden features, then please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So the first hidden feature is Windows Hello. It's an alternative way to log into Windows and it replaces passwords with strong two-factor authentication. The great thing about it is it can use the webcam and fingerprint sensor that's built into your notebook so that you can use biometric authentication to log in without a password. You couldn't just hold up a photograph of me and log into it. There needs to be a three-dimensional object that represents me, i.e. my face, in front of that camera and this makes it very secure. My device also has a fingerprint sensor built into it so I can use either the webcam for facial recognition or the fingerprint sensor to log in using Windows Hello. To configure Windows Hello you need to open the Windows 10 settings app and you can do that by pressing the Windows key and I at the same time. Then you come over to accounts and then sign in options. And you'll see here that there are three different ways you can configure Windows Hello. We have facial recognition, a fingerprint scanner, and a Windows Hello pin. All devices will always have the Windows Hello pin available as a configuration option. There are two steps to configuring Windows Hello. You will always need to configure a pin first because there needs to be a way to log into Windows should the facial recognition or fingerprint scanner fail for whatever reason. So let's start with facial recognition. Again, it's already configured on this device. In fact, you can improve recognition as many times as you like. But basically the process for improving recognition and configuring it for the first time is exactly the same. I'm going to click here, improve recognition. Again, it's going to confirm that it's really me. So it wants to know what my Windows Hello pin is. So I'm gonna type my Hello pin. And now I'm going to look at my webcam. So you can see that Windows has analyzed my face and whenever I use the webcam to log in, it should be able to recognize me. And I would suggest that you repeat this procedure maybe in several different positions, maybe with and without glasses if you wear glasses. Also, you can consider doing different lighting scenarios so that Windows is always able to recognize you. The procedure for logging in using a fingerprint is very similar. So if I come over here and I've already trained Windows to recognize a couple of my fingers, so you can add several different fingers. So I'm going to add another one. Again, we get the intro screen there. I'm just gonna click get started. Again, Windows is going to make sure, is it really me? So I'm gonna put in my Windows Hello pin and I'm gonna to touch the fingerprint sensor on my notebook and it's gonna keep asking me to touch and touch again until it's learned that that's my finger. Now it's gonna ask me to rest and lift the finger at different angles, just to do that again. Make sure it really is able to recognize the finger regardless of how I press on the fingerprint scanner. And there we're done, we're, we're ready to go. So at this point I can add another finger. Of course you can add all 10 fingers if you want, maybe even toes, I have no idea. But I'm gonna just click close there, I'm happy with that. So now I can log in either with my face or with a finger. So the second hidden feature is called AeroSnap. And this feature allows you to quickly and easily arrange the open applications that you have on your desktop without having to manually move them around and position the windows on the screen. So you can use AeroSnap with either the mouse or the keyboard, and I'll show you both, but let's start with the mouse. So if I press Alt-Tab, you can see that I've got, well, seven different applications open here at the moment on this desktop. 
So let's say I want to arrange them in a way that I can actually work with them effectively. Because as you can see, the windows are kind of placed randomly at the moment on the desktop, and I can't really easily work with them. Now, of course, I could just manually position them with the mouse, but AeroSnap allows me to position them exactly where I need them, and so that I can work with a minimum of two applications at the same time. So let's take this Word document, for instance. I'm going to snap this document to the left of the screen. So all I need to do is click on the top of the application and hold, bring the mouse over to the far left, and you can see there, if I let go of the mouse button, that this app is now snapped to the left of our display. Now there's another feature here called Snap Assist, and what this does is say, well, okay, you've now snapped that application to the left, and what application would you like me to automatically snap to the right of the screen? Now, here it's offering me the remaining applications, and I can come over with the mouse and either choose, like this, or if I just press enter, it will pick whatever is first in the list. So I'm gonna just press enter, and of course the first in the list there is OneNote, and you can see that has now snapped automatically to the right of the display. So in exactly the same way, of course, if I wanted to snap an application to the right of the display, I would just click the top of it like this, hold down with the mouse button, drag it to the far right, and then let go. If you have a bigger display, you can snap applications into the top left and right corner, so you can see four applications at the same time. And that works in a very similar way. So I'm just gonna click on the top of the application and drag it into the top right corner and let go. And now you can see again here that Snap Assist is offering which application would I like to snap to the bottom right hand corner. So I'm gonna click the browser there, and you can see now we have three applications snapped into place. So everything that I just did with the mouse, you can also do with keyboard shortcuts. The third hidden feature is called Your Phone. It's an application that's built into Windows 10, and it allows you to work with your phone without ever actually having to pick up the device. So if you want to do something like maybe copy a photograph from your phone to your PC, check your messages or reply to a message, you can do all of that without ever having to take your hands away from the mouse and keyboard. Now your phone is designed to work with Android and iOS, but it works much better with Android. So if you're using iOS, by all means you can install it on your phone and connect it to your PC, but the features are much more limited. So you can see here that it's divided into four different sections notifications and messages, photos and calls. So let's start with notifications at the top here. And you can see that there's not very much going on here with my notifications, but there are a couple of different things in here from WhatsApp, from LinkedIn and uh, from TikTok. So it depends on, of course, what applications you have installed on your device. And you can even configure which applications are allowed to send notifications to you via your phone so that you're not overwhelmed with notifications on your PC. It's also possible here to mark messages as read or for some applications, you also have the ability to reply to messages directly without having to leave your phone. So for instance here, I could reply to this message directly without having to open the WhatsApp app on my desktop or on my phone. For messages, this is SMS messages. We've pretty much got the same situation. So I don't use SMS very much, but mainly I've got stuff here that is just from different service providers telling me that I should pay my bill or something like this. And you can, again, reply to the messages here directly. You've also got the option to add emojis, GIFs, and photos to your SMS messages, and even choose which SIM card you're going to use. If you have a dual SIM phone, you can choose which SIM card to send the message on, and that's great for quickly responding to SMS messages. And photos is probably one of the most useful features of your phone for me. These are the photos that have been recently taken on my phone. So I think it shows up to 25 of the latest photographs and I can scroll down here. And you've got various different options in terms of what you do with these photographs. As you can see, they're mainly of my dog. So if I just click on that photograph, 
I can open it independently in the Photos and Movies app. I can copy it to the clipboard, which is of course very useful. I can save it to my PC or if I have any compatible apps, I can share it. One of the great things with this is that you can also drag and drop these photographs directly into other documents on your PC. So for instance, if I open up a blank Word documents, and I'm just going to use Aero Snap to put that to one side, and now I can just drag and drop that into Word, and it's done. So you can imagine that's much, much easier than having to transfer photographs from your phone, either emailing them to yourself or trying to use Bluetooth to transfer them. This is much, much faster to use. And finally, we have calls. Now this relies on Bluetooth being enabled on both the PC and the phone. And basically what it allows me to do is to make calls directly from my PC. So for instance, if I have a, have a headset connected to the PC, I can make calls without having to touch my phone at all. Either I can search my contacts or I can make calls to people you see here in the recent calls list or dial a completely new number using the dial pad there on the right of the screen. The fourth hidden feature is called restartable apps. Now we all have times where we either just want to shut down our devices or we need to restart it because maybe some updates need to apply, but it can be really time consuming to have to go through and reopen all of the apps that you had open in your current session. Now, Restartable apps is a feature in Windows 10 that is disabled by default, but if you enable it, whenever you restart or start up your PC, it will open any apps that you had open in the previous session, and this can save you a lot of time. Now, while a lot of common apps you might be using are compatible with this feature, not all applications are. Restartable apps are not enabled in Windows by default, so you need to open up Windows settings by pressing the Windows key and I at the same time. And if you come over to accounts and click sign in options, you'll see here that we have the option to restart apps. So all you need to do is to toggle that on. Now, if I close this and open an app that I know is restartable, so I know that Microsoft Edge is restartable. So I'm gonna open that. Let's open a couple of tabs here. So I'm gonna to go to the BBC website. Let's open Microsoft.com. Now, instead of closing this down, all I'm going to do now is restart this device. And you'll see that when I log back in, Edge will automatically start. So let's restart this PC. Okay, we've restarted, so I'm just going to type in my password. And there you go, you can see Edge has already opened. The fifth hidden feature is called Virtual Desktops. And what this allows you to do is organize your open applications on different desktops or virtual desktops. Now this feature is kind of hidden away in task view and you can create as many virtual desktops as you like. So to create a new virtual desktop, all I need to do is to enter task view and I can do that by pressing either the Windows key and tab or the task view icon in the taskbar here. At the moment we just have one desktop, so I'm gonna add a new desktop. You can see the icon here in the top left-hand corner. I can optionally give this desktop a name. I don't have to, but I can call it, for instance, let's say messaging. This is where I'm gonna put all of my messaging apps. And all I need to do, if I come back to desktop number one, we see here all the open applications on that desktop. Now let's say I want to move the mail app across to the messaging desktop. All I have to do is click on it with the mouse, then drag it over onto the messaging desktop, let go, and now it's over on the messaging desktop. So if I click the messaging desktop here, you can now see that we have this desktop with just the mail app open on it. If I come back to task view, I can switch between the two desktops by moving the mouse on whichever desktop I click on is the desktop that Windows will take me to. Alternatively, you can move between desktops by scrolling left or right. And to do that, you use Control, Windows, and the left and right arrow buttons. So now I'm gonna hold down Control, Windows, and the right arrow button, and that takes us to the messaging desktop. 
If I press Control, Windows and the left arrow button, that takes us back to the first desktop. If you'd like to see more detailed information about how to work with virtual desktops, then check out the video link in the top right corner of the screen that you can see now. So there are my five hidden features. I hope that you found something useful there. If you did, then please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and feel free to share the video with anybody you think might find it useful. That's it for today and I'll see you next time.